thou the ancient of days, whose strength does not abate, who said the glory of the youth is in their strength. Today, Lord, have your way in our hearts and in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let the, let the spirit of the blood of the Son of God speak over our lives and destiny in the name of Jesus. Grant a hearing here this morning. As it is written, let it be fulfilled. Once has the Lord spoken, but twice have I heard that all powers belong unto God. Cause power for establishment of our youthful lives in the name of Jesus. Cause celebration for weak in strength in the name of Jesus. Cause direction for the confused in the name of Jesus. Let the Son of God be lifted up over this meeting today. Let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done. We thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name, I will pray. Can somebody praise the Lord? Trinity youth, praise the Lord. Glory to God. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to church. Let me start on this note. Can, this morning, from our program, which is a youth service, the theme of the whole youth service is called Bone. B-O-N-E. Bone of my bone. Bone of my bone. I'm putting a subtitle to it that's called Bone and Flesh. All right? Media, we together. Let's start on one. I ask for item one. Can you please put it on the screen? And I please, if I ask you for something, please do respond so that we can make the most of time. Media, are we ready? I gave you two items. Bring item one on, please, very quickly. Is it there? All right. Please make it bolder. I think I'll make it bolder. Make it bolder. Can you see what's written there? All right. What's written? Say it louder. Are you sure? Which school did you go? Evening school? I thought I went to evening school. I thought all of you went to nursery and primary. What make it bolder, media, so that they can see. What letter did you say? Are you really sure? That is W. Okay, let's try something. If you look at it from on top, what will it look like? But I thought you people said W. Which school did this people? I thought I didn't go to nursery and primary, but I thought Trinity people were GRA people. What's wrong? What did you say if you are looking at it from up? But you said W before. All right. Look at it from the left. Look at it from the left. What will it be? Uh -uh. Quiet. Quiet. The Bible said we should be stable. We should not be like the water. W M E. But I thought all of you said W. Okay. Let's look at it from the right. What will it become? Hey, Jesus Christ. They've even brought number to alphabet. Trinity. Auntie, they said W. Now M, now E, now 3, all right? Take it mathematically and look at it from the right, what does it be, or from the left, what does it become? Ah, you see some people, some people are not good with math. You, it, when you are in church, you learn everything. When you look at it from the left, mathematically like Daddy Gio, Daddy Gio is our father in the Lord, what will it become? Sigma, summation. Some, yeah, some people are born again, they are first class students here, that's good. Now, I'd like to say to you, Never in your life conclude on any matter. What you see is dependent on the side from which you are looking. Are we together? Never think the other man is really wrong. What you see, it's actually dependent from the side that you are looking. If somebody had been on the left of this thing, it says it's E. Somebody on the right says it's 3. Somebody with a mathematical focus says it's summation. Somebody looking from the front says W. Somebody looking from on top says it's letter M. There is only one person who sees all the signs. Who is that person? Any mistake you make to contend with what he says makes you insane. And I, I want to talk to people that are sane and I want to be sane. I want to make the most of the spirit of God. Only God sees from all the sides. So when God calls something, something, whatever God calls it is what that thing is. It really doesn't matter how you see it. The Lord warned the children of Israel, very quick example, and said, don't marry foreign women. 
and don't marry many women. Solomon was said to be the wisest man that lived in his time. He did not just marry many women, he many married for many foreign women. He even married international women from Egypt. And he was able to paddle the boat because he was said to be a man of wisdom. But he did not see that letter W can become M. Letter W can become 3. The Bible said when he had grown old, his many wives turned his heart away from the Lord. He didn't see the end. But God is called the beginning. So whatsoever matter we discuss this morning, if you see the validity of the word of God, don't contest. You don't have to like it. Just swallow it. Go back and recheck it. You don't have to like God. Just love God. See, you don't even have to like me, but you must love me. Bible compels us to love. Bible doesn't compel us to like. You don't have to like your pastor, but you must love your pastor. So it really doesn't matter what the word of God says. You don't have to like it. You must love it. Otherwise, not loving it is death. And what we are looking for is what? Is life. Jesus said, in me is life, and in me you will have abundant life. So anything outside of the theory of God and of Jesus, a man will be negotiating with death. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. All right. If I start this matter on a question note, when God was talking about bone, because you said bone of, uh, bone of my bone, then I said a subtitle, bone and flesh. One of the few times I saw God talk about bone was in the book of Ezekiel. And the only thing God said in the book of Ezekiel about bone was a question. And I found out that when God asks you a question, you are, you are finished. You are finished. As a Christian, learn that principle and don't ever forget. If God ever asks you a question, don't stand up from where he has asked you. Don't move. You know why? They said he's omniscient God, meaning he knows everything. If he knows everything, why is he asking me? I should be the one asking him. So when God asks a question, there's disaster already. You remember Adam? Adam, where are thou? Did God not know in heaven where Adam was? Do you know the end of the story till today? The only question I saw God ask about bone, I don't know if there are other ones, was Ezekiel. Son of man, can this talk to me, George? Don't leave me alone now. Son of man, okay, oh, now some temperature is touching you. Maybe God has been asking you a question before now. You better go back and say, God, please, let's rediscuss. Son of man, can these bones live? Not one bone. The one we are talking about today is one. Oh. The one God was asking was many bones, very dry. Ezekiel was a smart, intelligent guy. He just turned at God and said, only you, nice Sabi. Adam could have said the same thing. Lord, how could you ask where am I when you see where I am? So, there's a big question this morning. He said, can these bones live? If God were to ask questions about your relationship or marital life, is he alive or dead? That's a big question. Because we are talking about bones. And God said to me this morning, that he wants me to deal with a particular issue about bones. Particular issue, we'll get there as God helps us. Is God asking a question in your relationship, in your marriage, or God is making your marriage and your relationship an answer to a word. Which one? But you know, like Ezekiel said, God knows. So it's time to go back to God and say to God, Thou knowest my beginning, thou knowest my end. Help me at this stage of my youthful life. In Jesus' name. Hope somebody, hope somebody is following. When we came to Jesus, there was an issue about bone. And the only thing they said about Jesus when he died on the cross, that none of his bones shall be broken. <laughs> so if you will survive in this world and in relationship life, for your bone never to be broken, God must be your masterpiece. Jesus must be your right-hand guy. We don't think in relationship that God is a, is a, is a bobo. See, in the normal world, when they look at a male guy, what do they call us? Bone. What do they call those people sitting beside you? Flesh. Where did they sit? Who taught them? Does bone exist without flesh? So why are they calling me bone? We'll find out this morning. But so that this bone, me and you, will not be broken. Only Jesus' bone was not broken. So if I will not be broken in marriage and in relationship, I need to give space to Jesus. Do you understand when they say somebody should be born again, the value of it now? 
not being born again and not having Jesus will end in a crash of bones somewhere. When he came to human beings, finally, the Bible said what God has joined together, let no man put us under. This tag that they gave this youth service, bone of my bone, who said it? Talk to me, talk to me, church. Who said it? You see, only a few people read their Bible. If you don't read your Bible, you are looking for trouble. You don't come to church on Sunday and think you will survive throughout the week. You take the one they give you in church and develop it. That's how your week answers to you. It was Adam that said, this, oh, some people are Bible students and I like that. That's Genesis 127. We're coming there. Adam didn't say, this is the bone of my bone. Adam said, this is now the bone of my bone. Let's pause it. That word now implies there is a before. And if there is a before and there is a now, that means there will be an after. <laughs> Which God is the same yesterday and today and forever? Who? Only God. <laughs> so anybody misses out of that God, what Adam started that day will end in trouble. Anybody in God will balance finally. You got to consider for those of us that are not married, it's your best option to start considering your present so that you can secure a correct future. For those of us that are already married and there's, there's storm in this journey, it's just for a now. If I will awake Jesus, this storm can become the game. So the man who started this story was Adam. And I asked the question, how did Adam know? Because he woke up from sleep, we'll get there. But who taught Adam to say, this is, when I go to Genesis 1.26, the Bible said, and God said, let us make man. So I guess Adam is copying his father. In your relationship life that you have started and that you're about to start, who are you copying? In my own present generation that they talk about dating, who have they copied? Where did they read it from? Who taught them that? Maybe there's nothing actually wrong with it. If it's properly defined and properly tracked, but is it the man that doesn't know Jesus that tracks it out? Let's leave there. It's a big story. It's a big story. <laughs> Let's deal with what we have to deal with for the moment. So we'll deal with three matters in this, in this service. One, bone matters. Two, the formation of man himself. Don't worry, I'm talking about relationship. And God gave me a specific assignment this morning. There was one I didn't want to put in my mouth because I know it will cause real trouble. But God said, you got to deal with it because there's trouble already in the house. All right? Then number three, we'll deal with the matter of deep sleep matters. So let's, let's deal quickly as God helps me. As God helps me. Bone matters. We already said it was Adam who said, this is now. Don't forget that word now. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. A woman is not equal to a wife. But it takes being a woman to become a wife. So the average material you see in town is woman. Finding a wife is another business entirely on its own. Anybody can afford to graduate with a 2-2. Two -two. A 2-1, two your brain must wake up and you must be diligent. A first class means you yourself, you are awake. Amen. There is a first class relationship and there is a 2-2 two -two relationship. And there is a third class relationship. The average dating, they call dating in my generation, is in third class. <laughs> le, le, wait, wait, listen, listen. There are many things I can't explain. Uh, you are supposed to be youth. I didn't see this program on my Facebook. I didn't see it on Instagram. And pastors are complaining church is not full. Why will church be full? Can somebody's bone and brain come alive from this morning? Church, talk to Look, forgive me my style of talking. But you are born again, I'm born again. You got the program. You said it's a youth Sunday, and I'm not seeing it flying everywhere. So nobody is telling you you are disturbing me with this your advert. Is it because you are not sure of what you have? You better be sure after today. You go to a relationship platform on Instagram. We had a whole program on dating. It will it will change your life. You can read up. You can read up the summary. We hold that service every last Sunday of the month, 3 to 5 p.m. Every last Sunday. Dating was about two months ago. Last month was called Pressure Cabin. It was for teenagers. This, this month, 29th of this month, is focused for the married. And it's called Vision or Division. 
His fire is in the world. Is so you must know what you are coming for. It's good business. So if you are married, that's, that's you, I can't explain everything. So whatever I explain to, please just take it. All right. Adam copied God, and we come to bone matters. What are the properties or what are the functions of a bone? I got to be quick with this one. Number one, I'll give you just five. It won't make sense now, but I'll balance it later. The, because this looks like we're gonna talk about relationship. My emotions are I'm dying for I'm dying for the babe. Oh, sorry, I'm still hope I'm still born again. Hope I'm still born again. My heart, wait. Has any of you ever seen an usher standing well dressed? And when you enter, you say, Wow, she looks good. Has it happened to you before? Then you say, Shut up, yeah, you're in church. Has it happened to you? I want to know if I'm the only Christian or the only sinner. Let me know about you people too. Have you entered service one day before and you saw an usher pretty fully dressed? And said, good morning, welcome to church, please this way. And in your heart, you say, wow, she looks good. Have you said it before? You said it before. How did you feel? I'm in church, stop that. Abby? No, no, no. We are not sinners. We didn't start it. It was God who put it in our heart. That's what is called emotions. But God needs to explain. That's part of what I need to explain this morning. So are we good to go? So when we come to bone matters, I want to give five characteristics. We'll tie it somewhere along the line. Number one, for one of the functions of the bone is to protect internal organs. Is your relationship protecting your husband or your wife? This person you are looking forward to start a relationship with, will you protect this person or destroy this person? Eve was to protect Adam, but it was Eve that helped Adam out of where they put him. Leave the story. Number two, where did they make the woman from? From the rib. What does the rib cover? The heart. The rib protects the heart. So one basic function of bone is protection. Number two, got to be very quick. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. True. The bone supports the framework of the person. You can't move around without bones in your body. This your marriage. Is it moving forward or, or backsliding Michael Jackson or stand still? Anyway, nobody stays as a stand still because it simply means you are decreasing. You will not decrease in Jesus' name. This relationship that you are looking at, will it build your academic life or is it destroying your mental capacity? Is he abusing you from the beginning or is he increasing your spiritual work? Does this relationship encourage you in the work with God or this relationship is saying, come, come, you and this church thing is too much. This is what bone does. It helps the movement. Number three, or rather it supports the frame. Number three, it aids movement. Three, bone aids our movement. Four, four, it provides an attachment for muscles. That's critical. The bone provides an attachment for muscles. Number five, where God said I should say a few things. It aids the production of blood cells in the bone marrow. A bone is useless if it does not have marrow. That's why the bones in Ezekiel were dead and dry. It is in the marrow that blood is formed. So if there is a bone that there is no marrow, the marrow is, there is no marrow. It's a useless bone. So you got to look at a man who doesn't have the Jesus in his life. As at that point, he's a useless man. We were all useless at one time because we were all children of the devil until we came to Jesus. Do you know that the life of an animal is in the blood? That's what scripture says to us. And since bloods are produced in the marrow and the marrows are in the bone, it simply means the things that cause for life is actually bone. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is strong and powerful. Dividing through joints, bones and marrows. So the word of God creates, creates something inside the bone called blood. Without blood, there can be life. And only through sex there is a life produced. So that means every sexual intercourse has brought about a shedding of blood. I didn't want to speak about these things, but God, God said something to me, and I have to deal with it and move forward. Every time a person who is not married gets involved in sexual activities, is actually shedding blood. Don't tell me, Pastor K, you are old school. Condom will stop it. Condom only stops spam. It doesn't stop life. Life is a spirit. So when God formed the woman, it was actually forming bone and blood because outside of blood, life is not formed. So everything that you do concerning your husband or your wife 
was meant to produce an extra added life to his business, to his health, to his vision, to his destiny. Let me stop there. We'll come back to those five. Those five properties, we're going to connect it. We'll connect it in a moment. Those five properties, all right? So if you think you're a sharp guy or you're a sharp babe, jumping around like Solomon is waiting in front. And don't forget, condom stop STD1. It doesn't stop STD2. Don't worry about STD1. You know that one. They taught you in school. Let me teach you STD2 in church. Sexually transmitted demons. Condom doesn't stop it. So in case you think you are sharper than us that are Jesus boy, church boy, you will soon know that we are smarter than you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new. And brand new and Belgium will not be made. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Cash, talaba. Let, let me go to the second part. I like this. The Lord just reminded me of another thing that he said to me. Two, formation of man. I like to ask you, where did bone come from? How did they produce bone? Have you seen a factory that produces bone? I've always said there's no factory that produces blood. But I came to this one as I was studying this one. That is true. They don't produce bone. No. And the only reason I think they don't produce bone is because they can't produce the marrow and the life inside of it. But you see, we're in church. If God produced bone, then we have the capacity to produce it. Wealth is attached to serving God. So I, I'm, bring, I'm bringing you business idea in this youth meeting. Are you with me? <laughs> Genesis 2.7. This is how God made man. And the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground. Out of the dust of what? Of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. So that means, one, we need to recognize our producer. Who is, the, who is our producer? Now we're talking about the male man now. I can't enter the Bible because he said he made them both male and female. That one is another, another corner entirely. But let's leave it as a male man, supposedly, for now. Because in Genesis 2, we saw something else. Genesis 1 was what God did. Genesis 2 was how God did it. Please keep that in your, in your principle. Genesis 1 is what God did. Genesis 2 is how God did it. Genesis 1 and 2 are the two perfect books of the Bible because in Genesis 1 and 2, sin has not entered. So anytime you get confused over any matter in life, just go back and read Genesis 1 and 2. Even though you don't understand it, keep reading it. You will find life sooner or later. It will flow. In Genesis 1 and 2, the solution to every issue in life, the way it ought to be. So you're looking for a husband, Genesis 1 and 2. You're looking for business, Genesis 1 and 2. The perfect ones. Amen. So the producer was God. I recognize him as maker too. The source document, the raw material God made man from was what? Talk to me. Dust, sand, sand. So are you telling me I'm just a bundle of sand? Anyway, when a man dies, what does he become? But many years after, they still see his bone. It seems that the last set of things that finally decays to become sand. So that means... Hold on, hold on, guy. Kala do shanti, kala. Lord, help. this time is touching my heart, and I'm, I'm trying to just beat this time, but I will. I'll try. God is the maker. The raw material is sand. What was the activation process? Because if it's sand, they used to make man. My children used to mold. They used to mold human beings, and none of them has worked. <laughs> eh? None of the sand has gone to school. What was the activation process? The breath of life. Where did they put the breath of life? In his nostrils. You know, in medical science, they call something CPR or something. When they want to resuscitate a life, they use their mouth to the person's mouth. That is Belgium. <laughs> That's Tokumbo life. The original brand new life came through where? Because as I, as I studied this thing, I got in my heart. That that brand new, uh, what did I call that my car? What did I call that my Jeep? Any other? Eh? Escalate. God bless you. Somebody's got to know your vision so that you don't get stranded. As I read this thing and God said, did you notice I breathed the breath of life into his nostril and the guy became. But you human beings, when you want to help somebody who fainted or who is in trouble to resuscitate him, you put your mouth in his mouth. He said, see, you are resuscitating me, I'm producing and so you are entitled to a brand new escalate. 
So I write it in this town, cool down. Don't look at me like that. And it's not your money. That's why I'm using your money. Eh? Is it your money? When I used to check and I used to talk about my Jeep, were you there? When I bought my first Jeep, were you there? So I'm opening my mouth to tell you about If Escalade is your problem, I'm still going to buy my private jet. That's the real one. So when we are going to come, don't look at me. Enter, enter your God is good. Uh, there's no need for flight. That's what God is good say. You will know the difference between four hours and 45 minutes. Okay, my yellow card is up. I got to do this. So uh, see, I'm preaching to you relationship. Me, I'm seeing a brand new card. That's what God showed me. Now, the activation was God breathing into his nostril and he activated him to become a living being. It was that breath that activated bone. It was that breath that activated heart. It was that breath that activated lungs. So if I can find this breath of God in my marriage, I can reactivate anything that I need to reactivate. If I can find this breath of God for my work as a, as, as a spinster or as a bachelor, I can locate where exactly was meant for me. This was the making of man, and I believe that this was making of bone. What is the essence of what I was saying in this place? It took the invisible to stand on the visible to introduce life to the motor. God, Lord, give understanding in this house. Until, until the invisible is introduced in the visible realm, the, the earth does not produce after this class of God. God took ordinary sand. But you can imagine God was standing on the sand. The sand was visible. God was invisible. God put the invisible into the visible and activated it. He gave it a double activation. You see the physical one, but you don't see the other one. So I am a two-in-one product. I can live in this realm and I can go upstairs to do what I need to do. That's why I came to the topic bone and flesh because bone doesn't exist. There are certain things God made in twos. For example, he made male, he made female. He made, he made, he made praise, he made worship. Huh? He made prayer, he made fasting. He made man, he made woman. He made husband, he made wives. Don't remain on one spot. Lord, can you help me? Moses was directing his father's sheep. Saw a burning bush. Turned aside to look. God said, remove your sandals from your, on a holy ground. At that point was the commissioning of Moses because the invisible appeared. It's called a ground matter. In law, they say there is no ground for this issue. You have lost the case. So God requires a ground in your marriage to be able to step in and help you to the destination of this goal you are pursuing. That ground is made in mortal clay that receives the life of God. So when a man is not born again, he's dead even though he's alive. That's the essence of being born again. We pro when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he became a living being. But when we get to the New Testament, the Bible said he's a life-giving spirit. So I'm not in the class of ordinary living. I'm in the class of the giving. Let's go to the final stage. Don't worry. Let's leave it there. Don't mind. Don't mind. I already have my yellow card. Right. I wanted to talk about the woman's side. Huh. Brainy moment. Pastor God, come and help me carry this so that I close this. We must enter second service. Don't worry. We must enter second. Thank you, sir. It's okay, sir. Okay, they touched the courage. They wrote, they said, I'll come back again. Uh -huh. that it's in the notes. It's in the notes. I didn't want to say this. He told me to repeat it to you. I'll come back again. But please give me two minutes. Can I, can I tie it in two minutes? Just two minutes. Two minutes. Wherever we leave it, see, you are youth. Go and log on on Instagram. Follow. You will read many things. How did God make the woman? I've seen the man. He took the man to his sleep and took a bone. So a woman is actually what? What's another name for woman? <laughs> so all these, all these guys that call themselves guys and call us bone, what are they thinking? What are they thinking? We born against need to correct our world. That we're God with the real. <laughs> that was the first time sleep was mentioned in the Bible. So every marriage was, every woman was supposed to bring rest and sleep into the life of the husband. 
based on the condition that the husband has been activated. Because if you have not been activated, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. They're really good. I'm, I'm really having luxury in this place for this time they're giving me. Let's make the most. We've got 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah, they just gave me extra time. All right? Sleep came for the first time because they wanted to produce the woman. When a woman comes into the life of a man, it's supposed to give him sleep. It's a sin for a man to have BP, except the man himself was not activated. Because some women are ready to give sleep to their husband, but the husband refused to be activated. Some samples of husbands are not activated when, they, when you see them drink beer. Or when you, you write four names of your husband's friend, and the four names are not born again, is a, a sign of non-activation. But you see, that's not your own problem. You do your own sign, let him do his own sign. All right? So in case your husband is not born again, or your wife is not born again, you have a double price to pay, more than we, that our head are still trying to balance. Honestly, so don't leave him. It's not you don't even have to talk to him, you got to start talking to the producer, right? Now, the question was this when they removed the rib from Adam, Adam was asleep. Oh, Lord. He said, And God formed the woman and brought her to Adam. So, God did not produce the woman where Adam was. Let me read the Bible back. <laughs> and God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make for him a help meet. And then God brought some other things. Then Adam slept, God removed the reproduced it, and the Bible says, and God brought the woman to Adam. If God was going to bring the woman to Adam, that means God was not where Adam was. You need to tell your husband that the factory and the showroom cannot be in the same place. Every woman is money for their husband. Let no guy ever toast you and say, if you marry me, I'll take it to land. Tell him when you marry your real guy, you will dash him visa to seven countries. Now Adam slept, woke up, saw this, saw this woman. That's where God said I should talk. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Saw this woman and said, this is now. So what was there before? It was Genesis 18 that God said, it is not good that this man will make for him. In Genesis 19, God said, and God brought all the animals. So what was there before were animals. When you see boyfriend, girlfriend things that guys do around in secondary school and university, those are animals. Oh... Oh, oh. It, it's an animal life. It's an animal. It's a token boy life. How many, how many women in this place would like to tell their daughter? See, don't be in a hurry over these guys. I had four boyfriends before I married your father. Wait, cool down, cool down. I know, I, you know, I told you that I'm not a normal pastor. Do you know that if your mother told you that, you will not be under pressure when you enter university? Do you know that there are some things that will come to you, but they feel if they tell us, we will look at them with bad eyes. So now this is the question. Leave them to their generation. When you get to your own place and you have your children, will you be able to look at them and tell them how many times you slept around before you finally married? Oh, the exam gets tougher. So if you are messing around, now, look, in, in our generation, it's not for you to tell them. They're going to ask you. So, you, so you, if you have made mistakes, you better start correcting it. That's not where we're going. For, uh, those are my children. They go and ask them any question about my past life, my present to come. So it's easier to talk when you were clean into marriage. It's easier. Even though I was clean into marriage without sex, I did many bad things as bad boy. They know they have every record. And the reason they have the record is so that they don't go under the same pressure. So Adam woke up. How did Adam recognize this thing that he showed up? Adam, they, I asked my children in their biology, how many bones does a human being have? They said that they about 206 bones. How did Adam know that this is now bone of my bone? Which part? Out of 206 bones. See, for, for those of you that are not married, you have more problems than the people that are married. There are about 7 billion people on earth, 4 billion women. Now, you are not going to see 206 bones. You are going to see 4 billion times 206. How do you recognize your bone? So those of you that are married, congratulations, but you need to go and rebalance the equation. Those that are not married, you got to come and identify how did Adam identify this thing? And Adam did not go to University of Benin, neither University of Lagos. It is not called education or knowledge. It is called revelation. Relationship must never start outside of the revelation and the knowledge of God. Only Jesus knew the fish that had money in his mouth. There are more than 7 billion fishes in the ocean. But Jesus said to Peter, the first one, open it. Peter was a fisherman. 
three, Jesus had to be careful. Jesus said, take a hook. If Jesus didn't say take a hook, Peter would have carried the net. You can't fail, you can't be poor following God. The hook is a retailer. The net is a wholesaler. And then the producer is the man who got the spirit in full. You were born to be a producer. They taught us all the nonsense in school about the factors of production and built in our head to, to, to grow up as labor. We grow up doing CV, looking for a job somewhere. When there is one of the factors that's called entrepreneurship, Jesus gave birth to us in the entrepreneurial capacity. So a guy doesn't come toasting you and you're falling for him because of some material goods or whatsoever. You have the same capacity to produce the same thing. This was the selection process. Adam recognized who was there. And what was the recognition of Adam? You see that day that they breathed into Adam's nose drill, it awoken some faculties in Adam. Among the many faculties, one of them was called the emotions of Adam. A rib, a rib, a rib is one of these. Am I right? And I, I, I started thinking, Lord, if you took one, then there should be unbalanced rib. I asked the medical doctors in my church, how many ribs do we have? Some, some years ago, and they said, Pastor, about eight or nine. I can't remember the figure they gave me. But I, 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 I tried to check that. It seems this side is still balanced with this side. So it means that God took one complete rib. And the rib is a bone that is bent. Am I right? See, I want to show you part of the activation of Adam that caused Adam to see this thing and that causes trouble so that we can solve this problem. This curve will be two curves, one on the right, one on the left. Am I right? So when you look at the Chelsea of a woman and the backer of a woman, you know that European League is complete. No, don't talk to me. Be born again. Come. Okay. Let, let me wake this church. Let me wake it up. I'm closing now. I'm closing now. I didn't want to talk about this thing, but God said to me this morning, deal with this issue. Deal with this pressure. Some married men are facing this pressure. That's why you see them commit adultery and having a, they call it a It's not a stramata. It's called adultery. Some singles are out of order because these emotions can't be controlled. I didn't want to enter this matter, but God said deal with it. So that means there must be a life God wants to correct or do something with when God took the rib, it's a two curve. So we assume one curve. You see? Uncle, come. Sir, sir, come, 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 come. He's a male man like me. Come, sir. Forgive me. If you look at him from the front, he's flat. If you look at me from the back, what am I? Talk to me. Mama, borrow me. You're a first timer, but I like your smile, see? I like your smile. All right. Don't mind them, don't mind them. She's yellow like me, that's why I can take her. If you compare her to us, check her front. Does it look flat? If her husband catch me and I show her back, it will cause trouble. So imagine the back. Sit down, ma. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You see, that bone, that, that rib is what produced Chelsea Football Club. When your teenagers are talking and they are saying, Chelsea play 2-3, you better let your head be correct at home. You better call them and say, which of these Chelsea are we talking about here? You better don't say, you get the head. You better leave Bible and say, bros, let's discuss this thing in God. It was God that started this thing. So let's use God to solve this problem, right? So when you see the protruding of a woman, I guess that curve of the bone brought it out and brought it back. And anytime we men see it, it's just waking something that does time. You, 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 you. This was what Adam saw. And it inspired the revelation. It now said in verse 23 and 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and be joined. Until there is a joining, there is no wife. It's only a woman and the woman is just a bone. Shall be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. And they were naked and were not ashamed. So when you get to the office and one stupid Ekaite chooses to write his check in your front by bending like this. Behave like me by carrying your phone and say, honey, I have one. That's exactly what I do. My wife is there. Once you do the nonsense to show me what is not missing. Because I understand that I have found my own. When you know where your bone is, another one doesn't trip you. 
There are no two breasts that are different. They are only different in sizes. And every husband can enhance the size that they want it to. So if you are complaining as a husband, you have a problem. That was what Isaac was doing. I'm careful in this service because we are mixed out. Now, I'll, I'll close it on this. I'll close it on this. I'll, I'll close it on this. I'll leave it and pack it. We'll meet next time. Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verse 8 and 9. Songs of Solomon chapter 8, verse 8 and 9 says, We have a little sister. She does not have a breast. In the day they come to talk for her, what shall we say? If she were a wall, we would have built upon her a palace placement. If she were a door, we would have built upon her silver, whatsoever. Two things. Wall or what? Or door. For the unmarried, God expects you when you see Chelsea and Baka. You need to log on to the computer of God and quickly ask a question. Beautiful, beautiful Lord, beautiful Lord. Can we get the statistics? Does it match this 206, this 206? God says 205 and a half, 205 and a half. Is it your old? You quickly, you quickly delete the page. When we don't have a capacity to find out from God, is when you begin to pursue every 206 that is not your own. So, the wall and the door are part of a building. But the door is movable, the wall is not movable. I'm closing. The wall is not movable. Every single in the house, in the period before you find and you became joined, you are supposed to live as a wall. It doesn't shift barrier. No guy dating you, engaged to you, cutting with you, should find his hand under your bra. One of the commitments you must make guys take before you say yes. I do is married, so leave that one. But yes, when you want to give a guy yes, after confirming prayer from your heart and everything, ask him to promise you that he will never put his hand under your bra without asking you. Because every lady loves it, every guy wants it. But so that we can preserve our destiny like Joseph in God, it's better to take an insurance policy. And then it's better. Singles finish for you. For now. Married. While the singles are supposed to be a wall, every married is supposed to be a door. You are supposed to know when to swing in and when to swing out. When you get home as married, read Proverbs chapter 15 verse 19. He talked about one thing that he said, Always. That looks like table tennis ball. All the men, are you with me? You got to learn to play. When they say you don't enter kitchen, from today, enter the kitchen, take one meat, it's not stealing, then play with your table tennis ball. I didn't say anything. I don't know why some men will be buying muka foam as pillow when they have two registered standard Nigeria organization pillow from heaven delivered. Deliv married uh, on single. What did I say to you? What are we supposed to be? War. You keep this information in your left hand and somewhere down your heart. Waiting for the day of marriage and then you show up. That's why they think we that are born again are dull and dry. Jesus must have been the finest guy that ever lived. When Jesus spoke to that babe in John chapter 4 by the well, did you imagine the two things Jesus said to that babe? If only you know who is the gift of God and who is yearning with you. Every genuine man born of God knows who they are and the gift that they can. Stand on your feet with me this morning, George. Stand on your feet with me. We're not in a hurry for relationship. We're not in a hurry for marriage. We need to identify what is our own and press that way. Lift your hands to God and say to him, Lord, every mistake I've made in my marriage, I turn around back to you, God. I thought, God, it doesn't exist in scripture. Say as a youth, this pressure and this tension I'm facing, so it's normal. So it's not even a sin after all. But it's my choice to control it. It's my choice to defend it. See, a wall will protect you depending on the side where you are standing. If you are standing behind a wall, you are protected. If you are standing in front of a wall, you are exposed. So Jesus wants to protect us. Kayanda, Shabaragado, Sakata, Lagade, Masataya. Say to yourself, there is no need hiding anything from my husband anymore. There is no need hiding anything from my wife anymore. God made us like this. This is how we were wrong. Tell to yourself, I will be a model. I will be a model. I will be a model youth. Everyone will see that I am of the Lord. I will marry the best guy in town. I will cause my husband and my wife to flourish. Jesus Kalande Akashata. Yagadagada Gabarush Kepata. Etopa Elano Sakata. Eda Ayanga Baduska Elado Sata. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Bow your heads, close your head. You are in this service. You have never given your life to Jesus wholeheartedly. You've never thought it could work. Please lift up your right hand. I'd like to pray with you for just one minute. We're totally running out of time. 
you are in this service you have never thought this church thing works but now from the little that we have shared you know it works in emotion it works in finance it works in money it works in property it works on every side and you want to say to Jesus I would rather take this risk the Bible said test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out is there anyone in this service who wants to say to Jesus come into my life be my Lord and raise your right hand I got 30 seconds to pray with you anyone this is not the time to be ashamed the Bible said if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father in heaven anyone thank you Holy Ghost thank you Holy Ghost finally the Lord said to me when I was coming that he was going to heal bone issues he will heal bone issues apart from your marital issues from what I've discussed he wants to heal physical bone issue particularly if you have a challenge on the left leg any part of the bone of the left leg of the left leg God said that to me put your hands there I speak a word to you and watch what the Lord can do you have a problem on the leg it doesn't matter it's bent is anything and as far as it's a bone challenge I don't care what name it is God gave me a word father I have declared as your mouth have spoken as your mouth has spoken to me you said to that man by the pool of Bethsaida will down be made whole he said no man to help me they taught us that he does not have faith agreed Lord but he said when I'm trying so he was willing he was willing and then you said arise carry your mat and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the spirit of life that walketh in the marrows every hand on the left leg and whatsoever part because I saw when I started preaching somebody shouted I have an issue on the right everyone who's believed for it Lord let there be a straightening let there be an arising let that out of this meeting in this service in this service let there be an arising let strength come afresh let God be glorified we bless you for today Lord in Jesus precious name I will pray celebrate Jesus